called the hooping saw, and you use that. The saw blade and the saw itself is used across key stage three and beyond. It's a key skill to learn, and certainly you start out in year eight. So if we start to look at the saw itself, particularly, first of all, the saw itself and how it works. You can see here that the main cutting part of the saw is in this blade, which is held in tension between two saw grips on the other side. Okay, whenever the blade is mounted, if you flip it over this direction here, you will see that there are little grips that will sl uh, push into the slots that allow the blade itself to be held in tension. So the blade itself, if we look at it, it's made from steel, and you can see that it's actually quite flexible whenever we're using it, okay? And it's only whenever that's pulled into tension that that becomes useful, because in this form here, of course, it's not that useful. So it's, when we look at the saw and, and how it mounts, first of all, we need to hold onto the saw grip here, the blade grip, and hold this, because if we try to rotate it with that, the saw grip will rotate at the same time. So we need to hold this firmly in one hand, and then rotate anti-clockwise um, using our other hand to loosen it, loosen it. Now it's held in a thread, and the thread is mounted into the handle, so as we tighten or loosen, the thread moves out or in. So I'm going to move that out a slight bit, and you can see there now that there allows the blade to slowly be released because it's no longer held in tension. The blade itself, you see, whenever it's mounted correctly, the blades, okay, there are little sharp um, spikes on the end of the blade, and those should point back towards the handle if it's mounted correctly. And to mount it back in again, we simply reverse the process. First of all, we slide in the edge of the saw into the slot. Sorry, this might not be that clear on video. But you can see there, that will allow it to come down. I always find it useful to actually mount it on a table surface because it allows the little catches on the other side of the blade to be mounted into the slots. So then simply reverse the process to tighten the blade and extension again. So that there leaves the blade ready for use. So before we even look at how to use the saw itself, it's very, very important to gain an understanding of how we actually stand when we're using the saw. Your stance when using this tool is critically important because if we're standing off, uh, offline or we're standing at the wrong angle towards our work surface, it's going to create complications. So first of all, if I just stand back here without the saw in my hand, it's important that we have um, the goal that we refer to here because it's a golf stance. So there's a slight spring in our knees, okay? So we're relaxed. Um, and we then grip this here at the saw, just to show you this. Uh, first of all, just to keep it a golf theme, and obviously we're angling towards teaching boys, so uh, boys like uh, any reference to sport is something that they remember easily. So refer to it as the golf grip, okay? At which point we use, you can see that clearly, our two index fingers that are on the actual uh, blade grip here, okay, on the frame of the saw. Okay, uh, and once we're doing that there, the saw will then cut towards the center of the body, okay, or back in towards your belly button. And keeping that parallel with the side of the table means that we are in a nice distance and a nice relaxed stance for using the saw. If your body is too tense or too close to the vice, what you'll find is that the blade and the saw will move off the angle, okay? Because we're trying to cut in a tight proximity. We should step back from the table itself and place the saw in position so that when we move, it's in a relaxed stance and that we have maximum control of the coping saw itself by using our index fingers as we've indicated before. Just set up a small example here. Uh, of course, we do two uh, at year eight. We do two projects. Uh, one of those being a Christmas decoration. I've just laid out a template here. First of all, uh, the template itself. Um, uh, we use a snowman here, but our year eight's in the college. We we'll use a variety of shapes, just down to do and with connection of Christmas, and that's entirely down to what they choose or they design during the research process. So, using a uh, bench vise here, of course, we rotate that round and we we'll mount our piece into. Vice. Now just to show you a, a couple of things that will make it a little more simplistic for you. First of all, if we look at the, the way this is, I'll probably start by cutting this line. It's ideal that that line is running perpendicular to the desk. The reason for that there is because if we start cutting at an angle, we're starting uh, increasing the difficulty of our start point. So it's more ideal that we actually retain our piece around so that it's straight, okay, or almost close to straight. And run 90 degrees to the desk surface, okay? and we'll make it an awful lot more simplistic. Our starting point, if you want to come in a little bit closer, you will see here that um, we obviously are trying to make a part. Now, starting off itself can be difficult because we find that the blade slips down the surface. That, that, that obviously creates a difficulty. 
what we're trying to do is to create a starting point okay or a groove so we encourage our pupils to pull the wheel back okay and create a starting point or a starting line we will see here that will be just a little green and what the good thing about this little green is it allows the, the saw to grip somewhere and not slide along the surface now whenever it's sliding in here you will see it, it creates a starting point it's important from this point that we uh, only move the saw in a seesaw action such as this never at an angle where we change the stance for body you'll see as I change my body stance it will always point towards my belt at the center of my body or my belly button that will not allow the saw to go in the correct manner that will just create poor cuts okay so what we'll do we're going to do now is we're going to move into a straight cut so that's a, a good starting point and it will be the way that we will teach our year eights when doing this first out first of all we're going to cut down straight in the saw now you will see that i will start slowly and you'll be able to increase the pace of the cut as we move forward so we'll do, but you will see there's slight movement with the workpiece and this can happen with thinner materials so that you often find that using your left hand to start off will support thinner materials such as acrylic uh, this is plywood we're using in this scenario which you'll find is a little bit more stable and will allow the students to gain a little bit more control <laughs> There are two options we can go around the corner but because it's two straights meeting each other it's actually more beneficial to rotate the workpiece so that we cut back into that so we reverse cut the saw out because if we try to just pull it out of the piece the blade can snap very easily i'm just going to simply rotate the workpiece around so that it looks like so and i will repeat the process for moving in towards the cut center once again, I've created a start point. I'm now going to use the full golf grasp to move down towards the grass. leaving ourselves nice clean edges to work from. Uh, the next stage of course where we will teach our year eights and our key stage speed pupils to leave the finishing metal sandpaper. But that's not for the present. Now the next thing we're going to do is to learn how to cut curves. Obviously in the beginning of the process when we're using straights it's, it's a lot more simplistic. However when we start using curves we need to know how to utilise the flexibility of the steel blade in order to uh, optimise the quality of the cut. It's often a skill that some pupils will struggle with but um, with a little bit of experience of time uh, they generally grasp it quite quickly and um, whenever you learn uh, the limitations of the saw. Uh, first of all it is worth pointing out that over use or over um, rotate, rotation of the saw blade itself will cause the blade to break um, and we're trying to avoid that of course but uh, it does happen on occasions. Um, what we want to do first of all in exactly the same manner as we have before and um, we want to make sure that we leave a niche starting point okay, a little wider. and once we have that we've got a reference point now simply to, uh, to move around all we're going to do uh, and the way that the saw blade works is as we move the saw blade backwards and forwards we're allowed to move the saw in this case in a clockwise direction allowing it to move around the curved surface so it should be in exactly that manner that we are cutting using the saw blade so as you can see here, I'll just cut a small curve and point out a few of the features. You can see that the blade is slowly turning and it's that slow process. Now what is dangerous sometimes is individuals will try to rotate that blade really quickly and it's those sharp movements that will cause uh, the blade to fail and the steel to snap. What you will find is when you reach this point, like this, you're cutting at an awkward angle to your body. But it's so important that the blade, or the coping saw handle, still points towards the center of your body and doesn't move off the center point. 
obviously reaching this point here, I have two options. I can rotate it back around and continue my cut, which will show you how to do more, but that obviously increases the difficulty. In this scenario, it probably would be best to reverse it out, but just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to show you how you would turn the blade. Okay, the difficulties is our students will try to rotate the blade round in one motion, whereas what you need to do is to keep your movement moving backwards and forward and slowly turn the blade. The blade is easily turned at the point it's at without moving anywhere, but you must keep the blade moving backwards and forward in a reciprocating motion. As you can see, we've now turned it about 90 degrees and the blade hasn't moved anywhere. That's simply because the blade is able to cut a path as it rotates, allowing the blade to gain its maximum potential in the space it's sitting. You simply will just continue the cut right to the finish. Okay, I will reverse the saw out and from the point it's at. I sometimes find this is difficult, particularly when you're cutting curves. Okay, the secret there was the fact that it kept the blade moving. Obviously, if I'd uh, not been able to move the blade in a different direction, um, it will snap it, okay, trying to move it back in a dry motion. That completes the demonstration of the coping saw blade. Um, I hope it's been informative and it helps you and assist you as you learn these different techniques.